All right, so I'm going to be back testing my strategy. I do a minimum of one hour of back testing for a losing day. Um, so today we lost a trade. I'm going to back test my strategy, and then I also want to back test a new thing I saw um, about the change in the state of delivery versus. Um, versus a break structure. So I want to see uh, supposedly a change in the state of delivery uh, can get you in the trade a little bit earlier, but also obviously with that comes a little bit more of an aggressive approach, a little bit more risky approach. Uh, so we'll see how the change in the state of delivery versus break structure works for me. Uh, I'm going to try to, obviously it's going to be a little bit more difficult to spot change in the state of deliveries at first, um, but I'll get there. Initially, what I'm going to do is, like I said, just backtest my, my regular strategy. I have like a month left in this um, in this backtesting. Uh, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. Um, but I, I was backtesting the month of the month of May through, through June. So uh, whatever's left in June is what I have to backtest here. And then I'm going to uh, backtest change in the state of delivery so yep okay NFP this week, so can't trade past Wednesday morning. You see on the weekly here how bullish we are with that reaction off the fair value gap. I would assume that how this week closes out, especially with heavy news with NFP, I would assume we take the uh, previous weekly high and we continue bullish, so. Nice sweep here on the daily. Inversion fair value gap, fair value gap. This is a big magnet for price right now. And once we enter into that, buys are looking very good. If we can enter into it, I would assume we do. It's a pretty big magnet, like I said. I'm not looking to trade anything here yet. I don't like what I'm seeing. I could definitely see us come and take these lows. I don't want to trade opposite to my bias on the higher time frame, but I could definitely see us coming for these lows and into that inverse for value gap. Okay, so it did exactly that. Let's see if I would have gone for an inverse trade, would I have been able to enter? Yeah, for sure. All right, yep, for sure. This is beautiful. Entry, okay. This was a very clear magnet for price. I just, it was against my bias. Like I, that's a dilemma I have. I don't know, like I don't want to, trade inverse to my bias yet i think that's something i can eventually get towards i also struggle with confidence so i probably could like I, i'm sure i'm better at it than i think i am 
but it's just something I don't want to add into my trading plan yet. Okay, like here is where we could get a buy. However, pray still a lot this morning. And because of that, you gotta be careful, right? It could, <laughs> like it could rally, but like we just rallied to the downside. We're probably gonna get some accumulation, maybe some continuation. It's tough to say we continue here though, because of this, we'll see. Okay, we're getting some distribution, which I like. I just need to see a pullback before I do anything here. Try to go for the low hanging fruit. I would aim for right about this high, or that, that high, if we can get a pullback. Got to set up limit order. Setting a limit order for that candle would have been bad. This just wouldn't work from a risk reward standpoint. I'm pretty sure even if I did the limit order, it wouldn't have worked. And uh, the limit order might have worked. All right, let's set up limit. Let's uh, go back here real quick. Set a limit order. That's close enough, in my opinion, to equilibrium. Or why is it doing what it's doing right now? There we go. Um, limit, cool. Okay, this is where I would take half off. Give it room to breathe, however. We are pretty late into the day here, so. Yeah, this, at this point, moves up here. Yeah, nice, there we go. Rallied in a close there. You gotta remember, this is a shortened week for me because of NFP, right? During this backtesting week here. So, already won a trade on Monday. You know, you wanna, as much as you wanna enter whenever you see your trading plan or your model present, you also wanna protect profits. So, uh, just something to be aware of, right? Let's see. Tuesday, no news. Previous, well, let me see what I have marked here. Previous weekly high. Previous daily high. 
<clears throat> also a liquidity void. Heavy accumulation here. So I don't love that. But these are very smooth highs here. We're still inside this. This is a order below, is it? I'm struggling with it, if it's an order block or not because is it really in a discount? see how this plays. I mean, I am bullish, but we're accumulating, so I don't really love what I'm seeing. Alright, so we remained sideways during AM session. Continuing to remain sideways, but you see how smooth these are. They're smooth here too, but I just look, it's too smooth. Like, we're, we gotta go higher. Yeah. Now, here is somewhere where you could be like, all right, maybe I take this because resistance. Uh, but I don't have my trading plan or my model present, but like. If there was a sweep on a lower time frame, potentially. Right, like this. That's a sweep. It strayed a little bit away from my model, so I, I, didn't, I didn't want it. Also, you see this here. Already broke past the previous daily high, so that's not something we can target. Um, we're currently trading above the uh, liquidity void tier slash like fair value gap type thing. So uh, bullish, bullish, bullish. Well, here's where that like inversion shit comes into effect, right? Like if we can tap back into here, use that as support now. Um, yeah, bullish. Just need to see my model. see anything here. Just distributing. No uh no model present. I mean we could come for this high be a target. Higher. Yeah, it just didn't. My model wasn't there, right? I was bullish. So it's nice to see my bias play out. You can make an argument for this, right? Sweep, continuation. It's just on such a low time frame. I tend not to like lower time frame. Plus, well, I can give an entry anyway. I, I, I like the 15 minute sweeps. I like the hourly sweeps. I, I don't like. Uh, with lower time frame sweeps, I just don't. But yeah, there wouldn't have been an entry for us here anyway, so.
Oof. Sheesh. See, I should know that this already happened. Well, I should, just because it's so recent, this is literally June of this, this it's this month, but I don't remember shit. <laughs> Which is good, it, it helps for backups. I have a terrible memory. PM session anywhere. I don't want to say when NFP. So next day, next day, uh, next day. That was a beautiful NFP move, by the way. I don't know if it gave me an entry, but. With a five minute and the one minute. Bigger show, sure. Yeah, beautiful. Well, this is prior to 9 30, though, to be fair, but NFP is prior to 9 30. It's an 8 30 news event, so. If I wanted to wait until 9 30, though, that five minute worked really well, too. Here, let's see. Previous weekly high. Inside a daily for value gap right now. Consequent encroachments here. Previous weekly high is also previous daily high because it's Monday and we closed. Oh, it's Monday, so. Um, okay, I do remember marking this up because I was struggling with should my trading range be here or here, and realistically, it's here because this is where we get those sweep and sell side. Yeah, it's this week. Okay, CPI Wednesday. FOMC. Okay, so Wednesday's a crazy news day. This is not. No, it is. So Wednesday. So just have that in the back of our minds. Wednesday, CPI and FOMC. All right. I'd like this accumulation at all time highs. Can we get a sweep? We already entered into this fair value gap. a sweep. We didn't have a sweep. Like, this obviously was a sweep, but this sweep took place at 5 a.m., bro. I'm not, like, you know, 
but we needed to if we're gonna come down this far again we need this one more sweep so I didn't get that but I was looking for bullishness so I mean look how clean those highs were and then obviously when it doesn't sweep it also makes you more concerned with like wanting to buy from the distribution too like Something, you know. There's something. They open. Okay, this is the day before FMC and CPI, so. And realistically, we stayed in this accumulation. So, some heavy accumulation prior to, new, to, prior to a big news there, which makes sense. So, bullish stance hasn't changed at all. Still heavy accumulation. Day before FMC and CPI, so you gotta be cautious. We could easily just keep ranging until news tomorrow, so. What I would like to see to go higher here, I mean, shit. I don't know, this pretty, I like those, but these lows, man, but we're literally in the middle of the accumulation, which kind of sucks. Like a big move would have to happen today for me to buy, because I would need to see the slogan taken realistically. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe not. Like, I'd like to sweep on the 15 minute. Let's see how it plays here. Heard a market open. With, with some distribution, I wouldn't mind the sweep.
This, okay, I'll be honest with you, before entering this, I am a little bit concerned about this entry. I'm not 100% about it because of these eagle lows here. But I think I've seen enough where I, should, I can enter. There you go. I try to trust my gut, but sometimes, you know, I feel like an execution. I don't know. I try, I try really hard to trust my gut. That was maybe, an, well, obviously it was an entry I wouldn't have taken if I trusted my gut. But um, if I trust my gut all the time, I'll miss some good entries. So it's like, it's fucking hard, man. Trading's a fucking hard thing. <laughs> it's the hardest mental fucking challenge you can possibly give yourself. Is it doing what it did to me today? Well, today ended up continuing with its downwards movement, but I lost the trade, so I can't get back in. But yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. mm, nah, I had to be answering there. Tough one. Most likely no entry available anyway for the. Although you do get this uh, inverse fair value gap that gets used. Do we tap back into it? Hmm. We don't. We don't tap back into it. So the only way you enter here is if you enter off of like a fair inverse fair value gap getting disrespected. So you enter here or whatever. Underneath the inverse fair value gap. Is that what I was aiming for? What was I aiming for? I guess that's something you can aim for, man. Right? Alright. The next day is FOMC and CPI, so we stay. Clear of this day. All right. Couldn't be more uh, uh, in a D premium here, but you know. Doesn't mean we can't continue higher. Just something you gotta have in the back of your mind. Obviously, the yeah. We don't have really any targets to reach for. Previous daily high was taken already. Previous weekly high taken. Even. London session I was taken. I, it's, it's this is a tough one. I this is a good day for an inverse trade because we don't have any higher time frame targets. We have a nice gap that needs to be filled. This is something I wouldn't mind taking a sell on. Shut my hand. Boop. Right. Nine thirty open. This is the sweep. Right. Sweep. Equal lows. Gap needs to be filled. Now normally, again, like I said, I don't want to trade inverse to my bias, however, this is This is something that I don't I don't mind taking because of literally there is not a single higher time frame or lower time frame target on towards the upside that needs to be taken. We're at all time highs. We took the previous weekly high, we took the previous daily high, and we took the previous session high. We literally have no reason to continue higher. However, we do have a gap that needs to be filled on the on the downside. So it it makes it easy in my opinion. 
So that's a sweep. So if it trades in here, we're good. We're Gucci. We gotta account for this. What am I trading for? That's the question. What is, it's just, you know, I could do the gap open. I could trade for this. Let's trade for that. for the trade off. All right, good trade there. Next day, another one a week, it's a Friday. Do we wanna take, give those profits back? That's a question you have to ask yourself, even if you see something that looks really nice. Um, Still like a liquidity void here that I don't love, but smooth highs. I'd like to see this at least this low get taken. Or those lows get taken before the trade. A higher price actually. Don't like anything here. My model isn't present, and we're just stuck in accumulation. Currently, I mean, in this market, you can literally bet your house pretty much daily that you're going to close higher than you open. Uh, but I can't um, get in this without my model being present. So. Nothing there for me, which I'm perfectly fine with. So winning week, didn't give up any profits towards the end of the week there. So that's good, 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 good. Next day open. Let's look at the weekly here now. Traded above the previous weekly high already. So that's nothing we can trade for. Uh, and obviously that means because it's a Monday we traded above the previous daily high. This is still the same trading range for the daily time frame. So in a the premium still. I think I'm going to make a part two of this. I'm not done yet. I'm going to trade the rest of June here or the rest of what it allows me to trade. I forget where I said to stop it at. Um, and then I'll make a part two with the uh, change in the state of delivery versus breaker structure.
we can get a nice sweep here. I wouldn't mind taking it. Fair buy. Just remembering we are in a deep premium. There's equal lows here. Can we take that low though? That would be nice. Before we distribute higher. So that's that low taken then. Nice. See how smooth these candles are? I do remember this day. Uh, I think I took an actual trade on this. I can't remember though. I think I did. Wait for a break of structure. There's your break of structure. Oh, where are the smooth highs? Yeah, right there. It's tough, you know, do you target this? You target this. I really just want to see these equal eyes get taken. I like that candlesticks because they're so smooth. That's this. That's the easy bet. And that is what I took. I'm pretty sure. This is. I'm pretty sure this is the exact trade I took in real time. Uh, but it's good to see that I can easily see these things. Now, this is the one that I, yeah. Okay, the exact same thing happened to me in real time. It missed my limit order. It ended up, and like, look, this is tough because it, it didn't come back to equilibrium. And look, I don't, I give a little leeway with that, but this is a tough one. And tapped into that, and then went, eh, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, and then I forgot it actually happened. This is something I could get in off of, though, actually. We didn't take those eyes. More reason to come back for it. There's less of a reason to continue lower, and we swept the lows already. Fifty taken. I wish I would have caught that one at that time. But you see the difference between backtesting and actually trading. Um, if you look back at my previous videos, I have this one on live stream. And I didn't take that. Or I didn't leave my limit order. After my limit order didn't get tagged here, I didn't leave it. And realistically, because we didn't take these highs here, I should have left it. Had we taken these highs, then there's less of a reason for us to continue higher. Still probably would have been bullish, but less of a reason for us to continue higher if these get taken. And I would have been a little bit more opposed to leaving my limit order there. But in real time, it's tough. And I had taken my limit order off. So, something to learn from. That's why backtesting statistics can be a little bit deceiving, right? Look at that though, huh? Could have held that. Wish I would have held that. Right, that, that's when you can hold a runner potentially. Um, and just see how much you make from that, you know. But. Right, like even one contract left on for that amount of pips or points is crazy.
right, we actually have a previous daily high to actually come for for once. My God, can you believe that? What do we have news-wise? Nothing crazy. That's Tuesday. This is Friday. Yeah, this is a late news week. Did we tag back into this? Yeah, we did. We tapped into Right. Equal highs, fair value gap. Barely tapped into fair value gap. We'll probably come down lower for it, I hope, because that would mean a nice sweep. I really don't want anything until we take that low. Okay, technically the low's taken there. Four hour, tapping into that four hour. Fair value gap again. We get distribution here, I wouldn't mind taking a trade. Boom. mind a low hanging fruit there even though you, you could potentially come for this maybe leave a runner for that but I yeah oh. we'll see how this plays out because I'm a little skeptical because we barely swept but it was there so models there so Fair enough. That's enough. This is going to be one of those, isn't it? Ooh. It wants to go a little bit deeper, and we'll see if it. <laughs> yeah, but this also occurs at a point where I can't even. So nice price action overnight. Previous daily high here. This price action is not too inviting, I can't lie. I would assume we come and take these lows. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to do a part two of, by the way, this is the, um, these are the stats for this back test. So total of 14 trades, 11 of those 14 were winners. Gave us this for win rate. Made very, very close to 10% of the account in two months' time. Taking very few trades as well. Like, if you look at the here, in two months, I took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Granted, that's halfway through the month. So let's say we take another... Let's say we take another four. What was it? Fourteen. So, well, actually, uh, 
three, another three. So 17 total trades in the span of eight weeks. Uh, so very close to, yeah. I'm not good at math, but yeah, very close to two trades per week, which is what I what I aim for, and usually what the market gives two winners per week. So yeah, nice.